Holland um, might not be the right fit for Manchester United. But he put those rumours to bed, didn't he? Probably in the pajamas he always wears. But yeah, it, that, I wasn't one of those. I, I know you weren't. I knew it was I, and I, I knew, and I think the vast majority of people knew yeah. that. Um, he would score goals and a lot of goals mm. in this team. Yes, it might have taken a little bit of time for him to suss his teammates out, for his teammates to suss him out. I spoke to him halfway through the season and he was still moaning and groaning that not enough early balls were coming in despite the goals that he was scoring. And I think if that happens today, you get in this position today, Kevin De Bruyne puts that ball in there. Yep. There's no thinking about it, no pass out to this side. I think that ball goes in for him. Very similar one here in terms, of, again, that right hand side if it happens that again that ball goes in because as I said they've sussed each other out they know what he wants they know his strengths etc you can see he's not moaning you see he's moaning and gritting rightly so now or for the for the last four or five months that's exactly what's happened the ball every opportunity whether that ball's out wide whether the ball's in the middle in all he says is feed me get that ball into the box get that ball running in behind and I will get on the end of it I mean just phenomenal 52 goals that's not bad that he's, one <laughs> he's, he's, he is sensational yeah. and he, he's only going to get better I'm going to say if, if I'm nitpicking yeah is I'm not going to nitpick if you I'm going to give yeah. you the chance to nitpick is where can he improve well, as I said, he's only 22 years of age. We've seen all the great things about him, and there are many things. And if we're going to get picky, the one thing I would say is perhaps his link-up play or his hold-up play, when that ball goes into him to bring other people into the game, once or twice, and I am being picky, once or twice his touch could have improved. Yeah. But everything else is just sensational. I guess you don't have the problem of nitpicking, do you, Alice? <laughs> 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 Peter, I just want to ask you quickly, a bit, a, a, not before I you about keeping goal against Haaland because there's obviously similarities in terms of father-son relationship in yeah. professional football. How difficult can that be sometimes? Or the advantages and disadvantages? Yeah, well, so you, you, you see um, Alfie Engel's approach is different mm. to, to my approach. He's very much there. He's a, I think he acts for him as well. He's a, his yeah. agent. I, I kind of stepped back from that. I, I, I didn't want... I still wanted to sort of keep... Deliberately... Very, very. So we had a conversation. Once he said, once Casper said, "I'm going, I'm going to give it a go." Yeah. Then we had the talk. You know. So where do you want me and all this? All this, and and we've stayed like that, and and it's it's been good for both of us. You ever bring us. him up after a game and go, Casper? I thought you should have done that or that. Did he, I, no. No. We've had conversations about things. But never, never after a game. It's always been at the right, yeah. right time, and yeah. and also, I mean, you can't, you can't do that. Goalkeeping yeah. is so, it's so special. You've yeah. got to be, you, it's got to come out from yourself first. You've got to realize that you have to improve here. You can't, you can't say this or that because yeah. it takes a little bit of confidence yeah. away. Okay, that's fascinating. Um, Harland, if you were playing today, would you, would you make like do anything different if you're going to about to face him in a game? I, I, I probably wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't I mean? I, no, I wouldn't. I, I, I played against you know. We, we we shared our career. I mean, God knows how many goals you scored in the. But but if if I were thinking I'm playing Alan Shearer today, then my focus will be on that and not concentrating on what my real job is. So it's, for, for being a goalkeeper is a very it's a reactive situation. Yeah. You can't be proactive about anything. Yeah. You have to to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. But I think defenders can. Yeah. Defenders can, can yeah. plan against it. Mm -hmm. And then, as a goalkeeper, you just have to see what, whatever comes your way. Uh, United beat City in the derby in, in January. Um, mm. What can City learn from that? Um, obviously, with, with Walker and his positional change, I, I think tactically, in this game, Walker was going very high. You see his body position. He's on the front foot. He's never in this position, or he's very rarely in the position. You'll find him more in this position, dropped off in that three in the back with Stones then pushing into midfield. And Rashford, in this game, could have had a hat-trick. He was an absolute fire. And, yes, Cancelo was playing this game, Walker was playing the game, so it was what is different, or to play high and wide. But today, he's going to be dropping into that position. He'll never be caught out in these positions here because of the pace of Rashford. What's different today is Rashford's probably, as we've seen, going to play number nine. Mm. So Sancho's going to probably occupy Walker down this side where Ganacho was. But Man City have to be careful with the runs in behind in the centre of the picks because it'll be Walker will probably be in this position. And yes, this was a controversial goal, but that's where Man United mm. could hurt Man City mm. today. 
And I've got to speak about Kyle Walker. He's been absolutely yeah. immense. So, he's, he's the fastest in the league. Yeah. It doesn't seem like he's, he's slowing down. I, I don't know, he's, what is he? He's two years, yeah, he's two years yeah. younger than me, going to be 33. And he is such a weapon in terms of his recovery pace and the way yeah. Man City want to play. Yeah, it's very special when a player bursts yeah. on the scene and actually stays on the scene. Yeah, a lot longer. Uh, <laughs> um, John Stone's remarkable transition into a kind of semi-midfield player. I, I can't actually believe it at, at, at times because... When you're a centre-half and you go into midfield, it's completely different. Your body shapes are different. You're really receiving the ball on the half turn. And I said earlier in the show, he tried it before, but he's really bought into the role that, that he's given him. It can stop attacks. Man City were vulnerable at times on the counter-attack, but when you have him in there stopping them, it's so much different. The goals they're conceding is way less. I think they've only conceded 16 in, in 29 games since they've moved into this yeah. system. And, it, you know, Man City can win it with, with different systems. Yeah. Obviously, they've won it with a four. But I really think with this three and John Stones yeah. goes into the middle, yeah. it really helps the, the, yeah. the, the team. Certainly improved under that. Now, let's go pitch side to hear from another of Manchester United's treble winners. Uh, Yap Stam is with Jason Mohamed. Gary, thank you. Eric, as you said, one more game, a chance to win a trophy. And what a stage, Eric. Oh, it's great. As you are here in Wembley, uh, you feel the history. Uh, Manchester United, Manchester City, first time in the FA Cup final. And yeah, the big reputation of, the, of an FA Cup final. So I'm really happy to be proud and proud also to be part of it. What's the atmosphere like in that dressing room? How are the players feeling, Eric? They're feeling well. Uh, for them, it's a great opportunity. So I said to them before, uh, let's make one of the best days of their life. And in terms of stopping Manchester City, big rivals, from potentially winning a treble, is that firing them up? Nah, but it's more to make their own legacy and to win a trophy, to give the fans, our fans, another trophy. It's about that. I spent some time last weekend in Salford talking to Manchester United fans. They said to me, this one means more than anything, Eric. Yeah, but uh, so you have to approach this, this game. <laughs> you have to give uh, um, anything, everything, you have and more than 100% as a team and as individuals in togetherness. Been practicing penalties? Yes, as well. Good luck today. Good luck. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Pep, today could be another huge step towards the treble. So just how apt is it that today's final is against Manchester United? Yeah, it's a final FA Cup. Uh, we, we just talk about what you have to do to try to, to win the game. And it is against Manchester United. Does it make it even more special, the first ever FA Cup final between these two? Well, of course. So it's, you know, the two, the two teams in the same city. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to, for the first time in, in FA Cup history to play the final of both teams. Looking at your team, of course, you've got the Champions League final next week, but it does look like, other than changing your goalkeeper, it's your strongest team. How much has next Saturday played into your thinking? Next Saturday, I'm not thinking about it. So it's just today, and after we'll see what happens. You're clearly very focused on just today, but how have you kept your players focused on just today, not looking ahead? Because it's a fair cup final. It's enough, attractive. It will be a Premier League game, being already champion, so I, I, could, <coughs> I could understand the players will be focused in the final Champions League, but it's a fair cup final, so rarely you are here. So few occasions in... In your life, you can play the final FA Cup. So once we are there, you have to be focused. Best of luck today. Enjoy it. Thank you so much. Obviously, with that, I mean, you plan all week from a Manchester United point of view, <laughs> and then after 13 seconds, those plans are. Yeah. You've just got to say, right, been, OK. It's 12 seconds. 12 yeah, seconds, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, Inflation. And all those plans, you think, OK, let's just calm down. There's not much we could have done about that uh, about that goal. Yeah. And they did. And it, it was, it was other than that, it was a performance that I expected from Manchester United. Mm. Being tough, being hard, being disciplined and trying to make it as an, an ugly game, if you like. And the whatever you think of the decision, which we'll get into, yeah. they've got back into this game. Yeah. What have you made of it? Well, I'm sat here thinking it's 1-1. One, one. How is it 1-1? One, one? Uh, I mean, uh, in fact, no, if, if you don't mind me saying, after about 20 minutes, you say, please just be 1-0 at half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, uh, let's just get to half-time 1-0 down and we can re 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 there, possibly make one change. Uh, yeah. But uh, how is it 1-1? One, one? I, I mean, obviously, it's, it, it's a, the, the, the penalty is a correct decision. Mm. 
uh, but it's a, just a silly rule. And, yeah. you know, we benefited from this, uh, this rule this time. But the Manchester City are totally controlling every dominating everything. And that goal after 12 seconds, you know, it's... Wow. I mean, that... <laughs> how it's not more, I don't know. <laughs> Michael, tell us why. No, I, I just think... I think, tactically, Man United have been quite naive. I think the way the, the front four are pressing, Man City are finding gaps in between. Man City have been a little bit wasteful when they've got into opportunities. But it's a good cup final. We, mm. we expected. Alan said it. This is exactly what we expected. So, good game, but City will yeah. have to improve second. Well, we, 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 we've had the fastest goal in FA Cup history. It's now officially at 12 seconds. <laughs> We're quick out the blocks. Uh, on the starters, Gun Duan. Well, so, so, so much for sexy football for Man United. Route one, get on the end of that Erling, flick it on, see what you can get us. And he, he does win that header. Yeah. Uh, and then you can, but you, what you also can see is Gundogan free in there. I mean, Lindelof does well and wins that header there. But oh my goodness me, the technique, sensational is goal, just isn't incredible, isn't it? Yeah, but you can see Manchester United not completely lined up in the way they should. Casemiro shouldn't really go out there. Eriksen should be a bit further back. And, of course, Fred just stopped his run. Eriksen should have been with Gundogan. I think he should have been somewhere near him. Uh, but but we've got to talk about the technique. <laughs> oh, no, 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 the let's quality talk about the that. technique. I mean, it was just oh. wonderful. You Head were, over the ball, outside of the foot. It is sensational. And he's been in incredible form. Such like, a difficult skill, strike. that is. Wow. Yeah. Ball coming from that side to hit it with your right foot, to come onto it like that. Incredible strike. Well, here's, uh, we've actually got the, the goal that was the record holder before Gundogan's special, and it was, of course, Louis uh, Sahar after 15 seconds. 25. Oh, 25, yeah. sorry. 25. And it was uh, Everton, of course, when he was playing there, not uh, in his Manchester United days. Seems like it seems Big like Fel Fellaini in there, causing all sorts of... That was of pretty good as well. That's right, guys. That's a wonderful really. strike. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you plan all week and then all of a sudden that happens. Yeah. Tough to come back, yeah. but they have. Remarkable stuff. Right, let's get to the um, penalty decision. Um, I'm probably technically right in terms of the way the law is now, but I think we all agree that the law is um, an absurdity <sighs> at present. It's, 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 you know, it's so bad, it is. It's yeah. But according to the law, yes, it's a penalty. And the it's officials it. have done their job yeah. and they've got that right, albeit it, it took VAR to do it. But the law is... I mean... I have to be careful what I say because I, 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 I'm inclined to swear it annoys me that much, but I can't. It is, yeah. it is terrible, the law. What, I mean, they talk about natural, unnatural, uh, high hand, proximity, um, but what, that, that is natural. Right. That is a natural position. When you've gone up to head a ball and you're coming back down, your arms are in a natural position there. What on earth is he meant to do? Well, it's, it's actually happened just below from where we are. And we didn't react to it at all. We, we never even saw a replay. And then once we see that first replay there, we all go, that is a penalty. Yeah. Not that I think it is a penalty. Correct. I shouldn't think it's be, a silly rule. Yeah, it shouldn't be a penalty. Yeah. Um, penalty should be yeah. something you do really, really wrong. I have it, it on very reliable information that that law will be simplified, the handball law. I think it, they're going to almost go back to how it was. Common sense... Yeah, but how Which do you know when your hand's mean. natural? If you jump like that, your hand <laughs> is in a natural position. I always think that that, that is kind of ludicrous, isn't it, when they say your hand is in an unnatural position? Because unless it's not attached to your body, then it has to be surely <laughs> fairly Can natural. I just ask, what, what, what then is common sense? Then we well, still got to have people... Well, I it mean, depends on who watches it, you know, when well, the VAR room yeah. watches that, you know? Yeah. Indeed. It's good. Um, it's got to, they've got to change. They've got to be very, very clear about yeah. what it should be and shouldn't be. Bruno was cool, though. Knocked it away well, Alan. Yeah, he did. With a yeah. plum. Under, under huge pressure. He's got that, uh, that different technique. Worked for him there. Superb. Keeper dives down to his left-hand side. It's looking at him. There you go. And that, of course, is the first goal that Manchester City have conceded in the FA Cup this season. Yeah. In the celebration, though, um, Victor Lindelof was um, hit by an object... That, that's and, that, and I that's so can, wrong. I think we can see that here. If you just look at Lindelof on the left, a flash of I think green comes in. There it is. It's like a light or a battery or a, something oh, like that. It doesn't we don't want to see or a vape that, or whatever it is? It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be thrown the pitch. No, and that's no, we don't want to that, see. That's that, you know that's bad. I mean, yeah. 
Yeah. And, 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 and not, not blaming that it's Manchester City, it's somebody, you know, but we are at the Manchester City yeah. and they were celebrating at the Man uh, in front of the Manchester City supporters. Mm -hmm. And they should be big enough, they're winning enough yeah. to, to, to understand it's okay to go 1 1. You know, they shouldn't react like that. Yeah. that that's terrible. That should have some consequences. I hope they find the guy or the girl or whoever, whoever yeah. did that. Hopefully. Um, Rodri Hedo went um, pretty close when it was 1 0. Yeah, uh, early on in the game, uh, Man City applying the pressure. Wonderful balling from Kevin De Bruyne just makes a near post run just couldn't get enough purchase on it and we thought at this point you know Man City was going to really take the game to, to Man United take it away from them but it wasn't meant to be Man United dug in really well and yeah that was one of the early chances within the game yeah. but it's in a it's in the time of, uh, of the game where I'm thinking come on guys you got to get a grip you cannot this is like eight minutes in already one nil down you, you cannot defend like that in a in a in an FA Cup final, a game of this um, a magnitude. You can't. You got to do better than that. And they kind of got to grips with it a little bit. Yeah. Harlan's been threatening. Let's yeah, he, he had a couple of uh, half chances, didn't he? Um, I mean, he played his part in the uh, in the goal by winning that uh, the winning that header. But in terms of his uh, his movement and and getting him be uh, getting him behind, he shouldn't have that much time to come off and touch and turn. And we spoke about that ball going in. To the box into that area before the game, and that's exactly what they uh, what they did. He was a little bit unlucky there, but you can see the two centre halves. What she just goes long to then come in short, and then he has the little time to turn and the space, and that is a that is a classy ball in there. He's a tad un uh, tad unlucky, and it's very similar on the uh, on the other one there where the, the 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 ball goes there. They win the header, and he's got that time and touch to to, to turn again, but then he's too strong for Varane. I would have expected. I think he just slips, you know, just at the last second. And we mentioned him playing his part in the goal. That's what he offers Man City. He offers them to do that because you know he'll win his fair share up there. And if they pick the bits up, they've got a chance. But yeah, he's played his part in that. Yeah, Varane. Yeah, it, Adam, could... God, it was tricky. It was uh, at first. It looked like I, a really I, good you know, opportunity. This, this but... would have been completely unreal. It's a corner kick. The Man United's first corner kick in the game. It, gets, it is a little bit awkward. That, I agree. Is, but it's an empty goal. It's yeah. an open goal. Sorry. You know, and if it had that had felt fallen to a striker, you would think maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. that would have been yeah. two one Man United, and that would have been completely unreal, wouldn't it? Yeah, defenders could finish that, Micah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, a bit, of, a bit of well, a bit of talk about Casemiro on a Kanji. Should he have been a red card? I don't think he even got a yellow. But I mean, what do we think? No, I don't think it should have been a uh, no. red card. It was it was dangerous, but I think a yellow card would have been su sufficient. But he actually got the free kick. I think did he did Casemiro, yeah. which yeah. was quite ridiculous. Oh, but I, I don't I don't think that's a red card. I think no, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a yellow just, card. Yeah, yellow card, card would be sufficient. Right. OK, we're all agreed on that. Uh, yep. So let's go pitch side to see what Yap Stam made of that first half. He's with Kelly. Yeah, thank you, Gary. I think that Yap has been through every emotion in oh. that first half. But how are you feeling now? You've had a few minutes to reflect. Well, I'm a, I'm a bit more calm now, but it's, it's been hectic, isn't it? Especially when you start a game like that, when City is scoring straight away the first couple of seconds. It makes your game plan as a manager di well different a little bit as well. Um, you can see that you know, from the start of the first half, City is dominating the game. You know, United is dropping in, um, they're creating opportunities. And when United has got that ball, when they win it, City is, is well, all on top of them for a straight away to win that ball again. So it makes it very difficult for United to keep possession and to create something from possession. That's why you see during the first half as well that they do it, they play occasionally a, a little bit more the long ball and then try to win it by the long ball using the space with Rashford or with Sancho a little bit more as well. And then once or twice they get out and then they, well, they don't create an opportunity, but they get into the opposition's half a little, a little bit more. And then they go back into the game, they get back into the game by, you know, by getting this penalty, of course, with Grealish, you know, having his positioning is not completely right and needs to have this turn, his hand is up, and they get a penalty. And then, well, for United, you're lucky to get back into the game like that. And, and you need to, and I said it upstairs as well over there, you need to get under their skin as well with City a little bit more as well. You know that City is willing to keep the ball, they want to keep possession. So you need to be, especially in front of your own box, you need to be aggressive as well. You don't want to give away these, these spaces to them to create and open up and go and go forward. And even when you have the ball, when, you, when you've got possession yourself, you need to do better. You need to keep the ball a little bit more as well because that frustrates City as well. They don't like that when the opposition's got the ball. So you need to try to do that a little bit more uh, better and then hopefully using the space of what they're leaving if they're going to be stepping out even more impressive. But it's, it's going to be an interesting second half, I think. It certainly is. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm going to give you a lot of
رد الالماني يورجن كلوب المدير الفني لليفربول على انباء الانباء التي ترددت مؤخرا على طلب الدوري المصري محمد صلاح نجم ريدز الرحيل عن الفريق الانجليزي خلال ميركات الصيف المقبل بعد فشله في التاهل الى دوري ابطال اوروبا وقال كلوب في تصريحات ابرزها فابريزيو رومانو الصحفي المتخصص في انتقالات اللاعبين والمدربين عبر حسابه على تويتر مو صلاح يجب التواجد هنا في ليفربول بالتاكيد واضاف اذا جاء احد اللاعبين الي وقال لم نتاهل لدوري الابطال يجب ان اغادر فاني ساقوده بنفسي الى نادي اخر هذا ليس الوضع مع صلاح على الاطلاق ويرتبط الفرعون المصري بعقده مع ليفربول حتى صيف 2025 قد سجل 19 هدفا مع ريدز حتى الان في الموسم الحالي بالدوري الانجليزي الممتاز رغم معاناه فريقه بشكل لم يكن معهودا في المواسم الاخيره